Hi, I'm Adam's Downboy, and welcome to the start of the Mother Clucker Clan's raid guide series to Destiny 2's Kingsfall. These videos are designed to let anyone who hasn't run the raid, or anyone that's been stuck with ad clear duty as they're not sure what the more specialised roles involve, gain the insight to be able to step up with a bit more confidence. I'd like to thank my clanmates, Albert Aura, Alex, Dazzy, Electric Sheep, Tooks and Zone Runner for running the raid for me and Sheep in particular for helping me hone this script. If you've seen our previous guide to Vow of the Disciple, we'll be taking the same approach. Each section or encounter is shown as a separate video, with me first talking through the aims, arenas, mechanics, fireteam roles and loadouts. Then I'll talk you through the mechanics to show you the encounters from the perspective of all six fireteam members, pausing to explain how the mechanics and communication work. Finally, you can watch the encounter play out from the perspective of all six fireteam members to see how everything works in real time. In the series, we'll cover the location of the three secret chests that you can open in the raid. We'll also do a separate video to show the location of the nine runes that you can find dotted about the raid, which, when the correct runs are shot, will mean that you will drop a guaranteed deep sight weapon from the final boss chest. We're not covering the challenges, or the master version. Once you've learned the basics from our video and you're confident about the encounters, there are other videos that cover the mechanics of the triumphs and challenges and the additional mechanics of the master version. Our run was completed during the Season of Plunder, so reflects the seasonal mods and weapon meta at that time. There's only one overload champion in the standard version of the raid, so hopefully it'll be fairly easy to adapt to any future changes. I'll apologise now, and I'll continue to apologising through the separate videos for some of the fireteam voices being a little quiet throughout. This is only our second video, and we're still learning how to set up for these guides. It's obviously something we'll need to check for in future. These are the weapons and armour that drop from Kingsfall chests. Bungie has said that the trade combinations in Kingsfall weapons are deliberately spicy. You can get double damage perks, or combinations that are quite rare, which makes the ability to craft them very attractive. You'll need to extract the pattern from five deep sight versions of a weapon to be able to shape it at the Enclave on Savathun's throne world. The Raid Exotic Scout Rifle, Touch of Malice, is currently the highest damage output of any primary ammo weapon when used in a Well of Radiance or in the last two encounters of this raid within an aura of invincibility, so is well worth chasing. Unlike more recent Destiny 2 raids such as Deepstone Crypt with the common thread of augment mechanics and Vow of the Disciple using glyphs throughout the raid, the original Kingsfall doesn't really have a strong common mechanic running through it. What Bungie has done is to retrofit buffs and debuffs, known as brands, and the mechanic of claiming these brands over the top of the existing D1 encounters. That's not to say that the encounters don't all have their own mechanics, some of which are shared. There are capture plates in several encounters, there's a relay race mechanic in a couple of sections, there is a state called Torn Between Dimensions in two encounters in the final arena, and there are a variety of oversouls. If you're into Destiny lore, Oversouls are first mentioned in Chapter 38 of the Book of Sorrow, Verse 4.8, The Partition of Death. I've put the Ishtar Collective's web link to it in the video description. They're described as a way of separating a powerful hive's soul and hiding it in their throne world, so making them harder to kill. Oversouls are the basis of the boss wipe mechanics in most of Kingsfall. You can also get a recap of the lore behind the raid if you've played the D1 version, or a primer if you've never played it before from a My Name is Bife video, which I've also linked to in the description. There's no name for the first encounter, so I'm just going to refer to it by the location's name, the Hall of Souls. The object of this initial encounter, in what was in D1 the Court of Oryx in the Hall of Souls on the Dreadnought, is to open a portal to Oryx's Ascendant Realm. To do this, you'll need to, as a fire team, carry a pair of relics past Minor Hive and Taken adds and Taken Blight barriers to dunk in each of six statues in turn to charge them up until the portal appears. This opening section introduces you to the relay race-like feel of subsequent encounters in a gentle way, without the pressure of revive tokens or a wipe mechanic. The arena is largely symmetrical left and right, with an enclosed central chamber leading to the six statues in front of your spawn location, 
and a larger, more open chamber, the Court of Oryx Arena in D1, with a central dais beyond and on each side, a tunnel leading to a platform, a short bridge, and a larger outer chamber. If this is your first time, feel free to explore the area, as the encounter can't be started by accident by wandering about. In your exploration, you'll see there are small platforms that lead between the Court of Oryx Arena and the Outer Chambers. They can be used to travel between the areas after dunking a relic, but to be honest, it's probably easier just to use the tunnel. You'll split into two teams of three, with each team responsible for a side left and right. Within each team, there are three roles. One person is the runner, carrying the relic from its spawn point to the statue to dunk, one as the outer chamber gunner, assisting the runner in the outer chamber area, and one acting as an inner room gunner, assisting the runner in the inner chamber area. It's more efficient, plus it's also good practice for the next encounter, if the runners and gunners alternate roles, with the outer gunner moving to be in position to collect the next relic, and the inner gunner moving to the outer chamber while the runner runs to dunk. As illustrated in this diagram, the outer gunner then becomes the runner, the inner gunner becomes the outer gunner, and the runner becomes the inner gunner. Two people at a time, one from each side, will be carrying a relic. The relic prevents them from either using a weapon or charged melee, and suppresses your jump ability. You can still single jump and melee for a slightly faster movement while running. Each statue is charged in turn in a preset order. You'll be able to see which is active by it having a black orb with a green glow that looks similar to the relics floating in front of it. Picking up the first relics in the inner room starts the encounter and everyone will see a message on screen saying which guardians have picked them up. You'll see Take and Add spawn in the encounter area, which they'll continue to do intermittently or when a relic is picked up, and a Take and Blight barrier appear which blocks access to the statues. This will need to be destroyed by shooting the denser central blight area so that the runners can get through. At this point, the floor of the Court of Oryx Arena will become poisonous to stand on. Picking up a relic starts a timer for both runners, so you'll need to coordinate pickup to maximise the time to get to the statue that needs charging to dunk. Each relic from 2 to 6 will spawn in the outer rooms further away than the last, but don't worry too much about failing to get to the statues before the timer reaches zero. Any undunked relics will just despawn and respawn again at their original location with an extended timer, so all you'll lose is a bit of time. Picking up a relic in the outer chamber also spawns two Taken Blight barriers at either end of the tunnel that joins the inner and outer chambers. This needs to be destroyed quickly by the inner and outer room gunners. Two groups of Taken, made up of Scions and Phalanxes, will spawn in on left and right outer platforms and bridge. There will also be a couple of Taken Vandal snipers on the court dais that the two inner gunners should kill quickly. They can put up a barrier when wounded, so an anti-barrier weapon can be useful to finish them off. The main risk to your runner will come from being booped off a platform or the short bridge by a Phalanx, so the outer room gunner should make these their priority after destroying the barrier. The inner room gunner's job is to keep their area clear of enemies so that the runner has a clear run to the statue. When you dump the first relic of a pair, the timer will reset to 5 seconds regardless of how much time remains. The second relic must be dunked before this 5 second timer reaches zero. If the second relic runner isn't in the inner chamber, you can use the dunk reset to your advantage by having the first runner wait by the active statue until the timer is near zero before they dunk, so adding 5 seconds to the timer for the second runner to reach them. When a statue is successfully charged, the fire team will see messages on screen saying a statue hums with dark energy and that two new relics have appeared. Once you charge all six statues, the Court of Oryx Arena's poison floor will clear and adds will spawn around the arena. Kill these and a hive portal will appear, but don't jump through until someone checks underneath the dais first. Similarly to Vow of the Disciple, you can spawn a second chest with a guaranteed deep sight weapon after the final boss fight by shooting three rune plates scattered throughout the raid. You'll see the three runes in the walls and ceiling. You can use the Kapawaz Raid website to record which runes you need to shoot, and the website will tell you where to find them. You'll find the link in the video description. You'll also find a video from us quickly showing their locations at the end of our raid guide. After making a note of the three runes, make your way through the open portal to enter Oryx's Ascendant Realm and find the first reward chest of the raid. 
You can drop the Doom of Chelch's scout rifle or a class item at the soft cap power level from this chest. So, to loadouts. You'll need weapons to do two things. First, to kill groups of adds, mostly in CQC, in the inner and outer chambers, and second, to break the taken blight barriers so that the runner can pass. Some sort of ranged weapon is also useful to deal with the taken vandal snipers. To make sure you quickly take out taken phalanxes, weapons with traits such as reservoir burst, chain reaction, incandescent or vault shot can clear out ad waves as they spawn. Wither Horde is also good for firing where the Taken adds spawn in, and machine guns are good for adds and the barrier. Xenophage or Thunderlord can be a Swiss army knife here to break the Taken Blight barrier, clear adds quickly, and have enough range to kill the snipers on the dais. Now I'm going to show the video of the Clucker raid run, initially focusing on the left fire team, Sheep, Zone and Alex as they swap between the three roles, pausing and highlighting to guide you through the mechanics for the first few phases. After landing, rallying and agreeing who's doing what, Sheep and Alba pick up the first relics starting the encounter. Everyone in the central chamber kills the adds as they spawn in and shoots the denser central part of the blight wall to bring it down. Sheep and Alba run to the first statue to dunk. Sheep stays in the central chamber while Alex and Zone run out through the left side tunnel to the left outer chamber. Alright, let's get this show started then. Yeah, let's go. Alba. Three, two, one. Touch the ball. You want to pick up first one? Oh, yeah, totally. Zone picks up the second relic, and Alex destroys the outer blight barrier and kills the spawning Taken adds, focusing on the Taken phalanxes as his top priority. In the central chamber, Sheep and Alba bring the inner blight barrier down and kill the taken adds that spawn there. Zone makes his way to the second statue where Tux is waiting, and both dunk the relic. Alex stays in the outer chamber and gets ready to pick up the third relic, while Sheep makes his way in to act as the outer chamber gunner. After dunking, Zone stays in the central chamber to act as the gunner there. Alex picks up the third relic, and this time Sheep takes care of the outer blight barrier and taken adds. Zone destroys the inner blight barrier and the taken adds that spawn there. Finally, Alex and Dazzy dunk the relics in the third statue. I'm ready on the second. Set. Pick it up. I'm ready on the third. I'll now let the video of the rest of the encounter run. You should notice that Sheep, Zone and Alex all rotate between the three rolls on the left, while on the right, Alba stays in the central chamber and Tux and Dazzy rotate between the outer chamber gunner and runner rolls. Both methods work equally well, just make sure the rest of your team is on the same page and knows how you're rotating. So try to follow the remainder of this section's video using what you know now. You'll see how the runners coordinate their pickups and how to bunny hop and melee to speed up your movement as a runner. Okay, got it.
give me a sec. Okay, grab it. If I get through the You saw Dazzy, at my request, unsuccessfully try the return journey using the small platforms from the Court of Oryx Arena. But despite dying, he was able to return to the outer gunner duty on the right hand side after respawning, first shooting the blight barrier down and then getting rid of the phalanxes on the right platform so Tooks could run through and dunk. So don't worry too much if you do die. If you die as a gunner, just get back to your duties as quickly as possible. If you die as the runner, then let your outer gunner take over from you and pick up the relic once it respawns, while you make your way there to the outer chamber to take over from them as the gunner. After the statues are all charged, and the final spawn of adds kill to reveal the portal at the end of the section, you saw Zone run into the area under the dais to identify the three runes that the fire team needs to find and shoot as they make their way through the raid to reveal the deep sight chest after killing Oryx in the final encounter. We're doing a separate video that shows the location of the nine glyph plates in the raid, which will be part of the series playlist. That's all for the Hall of Souls encounter, your introduction to the Destiny 2 version of the King's Fall raid. I'd like to thank Kyber from Kyber3000 for permission to use the raid loot infographic, and on behalf of the Cluckers, our thanks for watching, we hope that's helped, and may all your drops be god rolls.